whole of human history is full of secrets and mysteries. In fact, even now in the age of science and technology, our whole world order is causing thousands of questions, many of which cannot be fully answered by scientists. The Time Puzzle crew tries to uncover some of those mysteries surrounding the mysterious places of Kazakhstan. Every nation has stories in history of brave and strong warriors who were not afraid of death and served in the name of one important goal, peace on their land. The Japanese called these warriors samurai. In Russia, they were called bogatirs. The Kazakh people called their defenders batirs. If we try to explain literally the meaning of the word batir, we could learn that this is a bold and brave warrior. The professional military who, as they would now say, have undergone special training were called this way. The best of the best. Their exploits were discussed among the people. People called their firstborn sons in their honor. There were legends. The free lands of Kazakhstan remember and honor the heroes of ancient battles. Tales of their courage and skill pass from mouth to mouth. And even Khans were mourning on their graves. Watch in today's episode. For what merits was the 17-year-old boy named Bate? He had a lot of fights, more than a hundred. Well, nobody can say that's for sure. But he never lost a battle. What do legends tell about the great Kazakh warrior? There is such information that he owned, or rather possessed, some kind of visionary, clairvoyant, clairvoyant gift. Rheinberg Batir is a person who inspires. Well, this is completely. He was such a personality. I can't even find proper words because when we did the montage, I had shivers all over my body while I was watching some of the moments. How did our ancestors fight in this land hundreds of years ago? Why today, Rheinberg Batir is considered a visionary and patron of many pilgrims. Learn about this and many other things in this episode of the Time Puzzle. Do not miss our program. Many glorious Batirs were born in the land of Kazakhstan. They made history of the country and fought for its independence. Today we are talking about a man who came to the people's militia as a child. He was not only a great warrior but also a visionary. Rheinbeck Batir. My name is Andrei Slozhin and this is The Time Puzzle. Personality of Rheinbeck Batir is still studied by many historians but nevertheless a lot of unsolved mysteries and secrets remained in his life. It is well known that Rheinbeck was born in 1705 on the territory where the Almaty region is now located. His grandfather was a prominent politician from a fairly wealthy family. The famous Kazakh Batir Kangalde's grandson was born in 1705 and he was named Rheinbeck. His grandson differed in this very independent, freedom-loving temper from childhood. Unfortunately, he became an orphan when he was a child. He lost his parents at the age of 11, and he wasn't just left to himself, but he experienced a rather complicated orphanage. Rheinbeck grandfather decided to raise a real Batir from his grandson and made the boy study martial arts. And in the meantime, he himself was engaged in political activities and even in the delegation of Kazakhs visited St. Petersburg. Folk legends connect the military education of Rheinbeck with one more legendary person. The local historian Gulmira Bilyalova told about this to our crew. There is such a legend that when Karasai Batir, the famous Karasai Batir, was returning from some military campaign, he saw Rheinbeck, who was only 11 years old. He was in the reeds on the Ili River, and he set fire to the reeds to attract the attention of this army of Karasai Batir. Karasai Batir noticed this and beckoned Rheinbeck to himself to find out what kind of a boy this was. 
As they say in the legend, Karasai Bhatia was struck by the courage and audacity of the boy. He decided to test the child to make sure of his strength of mind. Then Karasai Bhatia came up with an unusual test for his small rhyme back. Sent him to collect firewood for the fire and point it towards the nearby graves. It was already dark and Rhinebeck went there for firewood. And in order to frighten the boy, Karasai Bhatia summoned his two nukas, servants, and told them to dress in white and to frighten the boy as if they were ghosts. Still the child might be scared. Surprisingly, little Rhinebeck wasn't even afraid of imaginary ghosts, but also he attacked them with a kamcha in his hands. He beat them on the backs and said, go back to your graves. I do not have time to deal with you. I need to have time to collect firewood to cook Karasai Bhatia's dinner. And surprised by his courage of small Rhinebeck, Karasai couldn't leave the boy and then raised a famous Bhatia from him. This is one of the legends. According to historians, this is just a beautiful myth. The thing is that two great warriors could not meet for one simple reason. The well-known Kazakh military leader Karasai Bhatia, although he was from Jatisu, like crying back, he lived in another time, in the period from 1598 to 1671. As you know, Rheinbeck was born in 1705. It is possible that little Rheinbeck knew about the exploits of his fellow countrymen and invented beautiful stories about being familiar with Karasai Bhatia. He told these stories to the same young friends to boast, as it is naturally for children, and in consequence, this little boy inventions became a legend. It is known that by the age of 15, Rheinbeck was an excellent warrior. He skillfully did archery, perfectly mastered the sword, and defeated all rivals in melee combat. He participated in horse races. Moreover, there are such testimonies, sources, that he wrote, well, usually teenage Kazakh boys are involved in baiga, on horses, in races. He kept his horse going by screaming his own name, Ryan Back, Ryan Back. So he whipped up his horse, which was called a Kokoinak, that is, a race horse. That's how you can translate this word from the Kazakh language. And already by the age of 17, Ryan Back became famous in battles in combat duels. It is called Jacques Pejac in Kazakh, single combat with Junga Bates. According to historians, the Junga Khanate arose as a result of a conflict between the Mongolian dynasty of North Yuan and the Oirats in 1399. Oirats separated and created their own state, which was named Deben Oirat. Later in the 17th century, on the basis of this state, was born a new one, Junga Khanate. The opinions of historians were divided only with respect to exact dates. Some believe that it rose in 1634, others that in 1676. Still others suggest that the era foundation of the Junga Khanate was 1678. When Rheinbeck was born, a bloody war was already taking place on the Kazakh land for decades. The battles were so tragic for our people. The years that were named the years of the great disaster, Aktaban Shi Burundi, when thousands of Kazakh families and farms were destroyed, ruined. Thousands of people were enslaved. Although there is and evidence in history that this war hadn't been going on for decades without any pauses. There were times when, in general, two nations coexisted peacefully. Oirat, which is the same Jungars, and Kazakhs, the Kazakh population. The war between the Kazakhs and the Jungars for the lands was a mixed success throughout the 17th century. And at the beginning of the 18th century, the confrontation between the two nomadic cultures reached its apogee. Why did this land attract Jungars? This is a vast territory full of water sources. It is Jatisu, the land of seven rivers. Beautiful water springs, fertile land. There are trade routes from eastern Turkestan to the cities of southern Kazakhstan to Central Asia. 
There were also the Great Silk Road, however, by that time it may have ceased to exist, but at least trade was very developed here in the 17th and 18th centuries. And their power, the military power of the Jungars, they tested it, if we could say so, on the Kazakh lands. In the 20s and 40s of the 18th century, a huge part of the Kazakh lands was under the control of the invaders. The Jungar army was so well provided that the soldiers already at that time had a firearm. Mercenaries were also involved in the ranks. There are many historical evidences about the fact that there were Swedish officers in this army who had gained experience of fighting in European wars. They were paid gold. By the 30s of the 18th century, the Jungarian army had grown to such an extent that it could afford to wage a simultaneous war with China, the Kazakh Khanate, and raid the Russian Empire. Mainly military fortifications in Siberia and the Altai suffered from this. The famous battle of Orbulak, this was before the birth of Rheinbeck, but the ancestors of Rheinbeck participated in it. It happened in 1643 near the gorge Orbulak, where the Kazakh Khan Jangir with his 600 warriors bore the brunt of 50,000 Jungarian troops. And he called the Samarkand ruler Jalantos Bakadur for help who came to the rescue with his 20,000 strong army. And then the army, which was several times bigger, was defeated by such small detachments of Kazakh soldiers. Rheinberg Bate was a contemporary of the aggravation of the confrontation between the Kazakhs and the Jungars. It began in 1723. This time is described in the history of the Kazakh people as years of the great disaster. By this time, Rheinbeck had already received the glory of a skillful warrior from a simple militia turned into the head of the detachment, which he gathered from his fellow villagers, acquaintances and friends. His battle list was impressive. There were legends on the step that he fought in turn with the 17 strongest Junga warriors and defeated everyone. He had a lot of fights. More than a hundred. Well, nobody can say that's for sure, but he never lost a battle. Such fights were often practiced in military clashes between the two troops. History knows many such cases. What can we say the contest of the two best fighters representing the warring armies served as inspiration in Homer's writing of his world-famous Iliad, when Achilles hit Hector with a spear. Everyone knows the legend of the battle of the Russian hero Peres Svets with the Mongolian Batyr Chalubé. From the point of view of military strategy, such single fight is a universal way to influence the military spirit of the whole army. It's like a psychological pressure. If the army sees that their strongest player has lost, they already begin. How to tell you? Well, it is a psychological pressure on people. They are scared. Even with a small number of troops, our Kazakh army defeated the numerous army of the Jungars. The most glorified Raim Bagbate's victory in Jekpejek became a single combat with the strongest enemy leader, Badam Bagatur. Bagatur is a world belonging to the Altaic language family and designating an honorary title from the Mongolian or Jungarian tribes. It, as a rule, was attached to the name of the warrior by the type of the Kazakh Bater. For example, the Jungar army, they also had their own Bater's, and they were asked to put out the strongest of their Bater's. Here our legendary person Rheinberg Bater always went out and fought with them in single combats. Such battles took place in different places because the territory from which the battles were fought was enormous. Naturally, there were also complex transitions from one place to another. Warriors had a hard time not only morally but also physically. This is now the modern soldiers have everything you need. A changed form, water supply and filled kitchens. In case if the kitchen is delayed somewhere, soldiers can satisfy the hunger with a special set of high-calorie food or filled ration. 
those days, the soldiers did not have this kind of conveniences, and the barters came up with their own original way of transporting and storing provisions for long-range transitions. Very few people know, but our well-known favorite Bausaks, Kurt, Kumis, Iremshik, and Suyat are nothing more than field ration of that time. Suyat, or otherwise jerked meat of a rim or a horse in combination with Bausaks had a high calorie content and quickly quenches the hunger. Kurt and Iremshik are dried, salted curd. They could have a snack right on the run in the saddle or walking. Kumis, or mare's milk, improves appetite, normalizes the work of the stomach and helps digestibility of proteins and fats. It was carried in leather containers, so the drink did not spoil for a long time. It is possible that due to such food, the Kazakh army made one of the most difficult transitions to the place of the legendary battle with the Jungars. In 1729, in the Anakai battle, which took place in lower reaches of the Ili River, the unified Kazakh army led by Abul Kair Khan defeated the Jungars and knocked them out of the seven rivers. The armies of Rheinberg Batir, Kabanbai Batir, and Boginbai Batir made a huge contribution to this victory. The legendary battle between the Kazakh and Jungarian troops occurred, according to various sources, in December 1729 or in January 1730. Unfortunately, we don't have more accurate information. The information about this battle was collected on the basis of folk legends and legends of the Russian and Soviet ethnographic scientists, linguists, ecologists and folklorists, and member of the Archaeological and Ethnographic Society of the Kazan University, Abu Bakir Divayev. According to the data obtained in the course of this study, it was found out that this territory was key place during the confrontation between the two troops. From here it was easy to get out into the direction of the lands where the Karaganda, Kizil Uda and South Kazakhstan regions are now located. Plus the uniqueness of the landscape of this place made it possible to perform military maneuvers for the attacks of cavalry and infantry. The alternation of the Kakalin Mountains and Tugai thickets made it possible to move covertly a huge number of soldiers unnoticed and also created natural obstacles for the Assaulted. Near Lake Balkash, about 80,000 people on both sides participated in this battle. This is a huge, we can even say game-changing, historical battle that occurred in these years and it brought success to the Kazakh soldiers led by the commander-in-chief Khan Abul Kair. And all the Kazakh batters really showed courage, including Rhein Beck. In this battle, hand in hand with Rhein Beck, fought no less famous and brave warriors, Kaban Bai Batir and Bogen Bai Batir. In that battle, the Kazakhs used a new way of conducting military operations. The troops headed by Kaban Bai and Bogen Bai Batirs attacked the Jungar in the early morning using a moment of surprise. Rhein Beck Batir followed another tactic. According to historians, the army of Rheinbank had an interesting feature. In addition to the large day-long battles, this military leader did night outings, such a subverse guerrilla activity. In order not to confuse each other in the dark with the enemy, the soldiers used a special password, the name of their military chief, Rheinbank. Thus, the battle with the Jungars was practically round the clock for a long time. When the enemy army was exhausted, Khan Abul Kair deployed cavalry. In addition, fresh forces arrived from the Kazakh side to the place of confrontation. Swift horse attacks alternating with the constant pressure of foot soldiers gave their results. After the defeat in the Anrakai battle, the Jungar army weakened significantly. From the east, they were continuously attacked by detachments of the Chinese Emperor Kansi and from the west by the Kazakh army. The Jungars were forced to leave Jatisu and go to the Altai Mountains. But such successes in the battles were not always in the asset of Rheinberg Bater. There was one situation in his life from which he miraculously found a way out. And it was truly, literally a miracle. It is still unknown what it was, an excellent knowledge of the area or heavenly providence.
Легенда, могу сказать, такая, которую очень много людей знают. The legend, I can tell it. The one that so many people know. At one time when he did not always win the Junga. He used to lose to the Jungas and when... And when he retreated the Jungas, there is a monument to Ryan Begbate in the Narinkol district. They were surrounded by Jungas, and it happened so that they seemed to be besieged by Jungas. They did not have food or water. Then Rainbeck took his spear, punched the ground, and a spring flowed from there. And they quenched the thirst of the army and fight further. And that's how they won. This spring still exists. It is called the Spring of Bate Rainbeck. There is a lot of talk about this spring among the people and this interest, of course, could not help but remain unnoticed. The story of the legendary Bhatia's life was repeatedly told from the TV screens. My name is Meikan Ashurimbetov. I'm a director. I've been on TV since the 1985. And you know, during this time we had to shoot documentaries about our beautiful city, even some ordinary stories, well, in some historical programs and series. And one of them was about Rheinbeck Bate. Hearing the legend about this spear and this spring, the director spent many days searching for information, but he didn't find anything except for legends and short stories, where in one case there was a stuck spear and in another this sword that cut through the ground. There was nothing else but those tales. But how? Then in any place of the earth you can poke the ground with a spear and the artesian well would flow. Now that's interesting. He probably foresaw this. Maybe he knew that it was here in this place, exactly at the same time, at the same point, and he must use the spear. Now this is actually a mystery. While studying the history of the great Bhatia, May Khan Ashirim Betab learned another mystical story related to the name of Rahim Bak. But this time it was already in the present days at the grave of the legendary warrior. It was in the 60s. People knew about this place and they came to pray. And everyone, as they say, everyone did offerings as they could afford. And they buried money in the ground. Someone gave away paper money, rubles, someone coins. There was a construction site nearby, ordinary building of a house. And the foreman, the builders, they saw this moment that people used to come all the time praying and burying something. And then they realized that there was money. Of course they understood. And the foreman then, he was like, he gave a command to his guys. They began to dug money out and of course, what did they spend the money for? only for some drink, snack and stuff. And this is a sacred place, you see? And that's why every building, some short time, at some time, as they say, heavenly punishment overtook every one of them. Someone fell down from above, someone was hit by a bulldozer. I do not remember exactly. But all those who participated in this bad business, they were like, well, they suffered because of their crime. Rheinbeck Batir is revered not only as a warrior, but also as a skilled diplomat who was able to establish borders with China, persuading the Chinese protégé Manju Khan to make concessions and establish borders along the Tekes and Kakara rivers. In addition, Rheinbeck made a major contribution to the restructuring from the nomadic way of life of his fellow tribesmen to a settled one. He urged the people, his relatives, to engage in, for example, farming and sowing. Being a strong warrior, wise man and a true public figure, Rheinbeck lived a simple life. Like any man, he had a big family. 
They say that he had several wives and they gave him babies. Kuljaman, Altai, Nat, Kojagul, Oshi, Oragbai, Masakpai, Konakpai, Aitimbet, Joldi, and Karaltai, and numerous descendants occurred from them. The caretaker of the mausoleum of Rheinbeck Batir Kanat Tasmagambetov confirms the words of the historian. He has a lot of descendants. They come here for generations, sixth, seventh generation. They often come here. Many of his descendants now live in the Kagen district. Well, now it is called Rheinbeck district. Such legendary people are revered not only by their descendants. Rahim Bek Bantir, Kaban Bai Bantir, Bogin Bai Bantir, Abul Kayyir Khan became folk heroes who resisted the Jungar invaders. Thus, folk legends say that Bogin Bai Bantir did not lose a single battle and according to the researchers of their account, this commander had more than a hundred failures. Kaban Bai Bantir, according to legend, could easily raise a young horse on his shoulders, which is an average of about 400 kilograms of weight and also won 54 single combats. Batirhood is a social institution as well as bees, as well as Khans. That is, this is an estate, which had a special status, special merits. Legends are composed about the life of the Batirs. Streets and avenues are called in their honor. People establish their monuments, but also the Kazakh people honor those who were the heroes of their enemies. After all, in the Jungarian army there were also brave and experienced warriors. Their names have survived until now, moreover they are immortalized in the names of settlements. In general, many of these names are associated with the names of those Batirs who fought against Rheinbeck. The same Tugen, the same Boroldai, Kaskelen. These are the names of the Jungar Batirs. And I cannot, as a historian, I cannot deny their greatness. Because this, I do not see, we cannot see them as enemies only. It was a history. It is necessary to treat this objectively. These people are worthy of the same respect, the same memory. But there is no such nation as the Oirat. There are only legends, myths and annals left. Previously, according to historical data, here was a part of the Silk Road. In the 20th century, Tashkent Street appeared in the city of Almaty. In 1992, it was renamed into Rheinbeck Bati Revenue. There is a monument of the great warrior, and if you move further in a western direction, there is his tomb. The mausoleum of Rheinbeck Batir is built in the shape of a multi-faceted pyramid, next to which there is a sculpture of a sitting camel. This choice is not accidental. An interesting legend relates to it. There is such information that he owned or rather possessed some kind of visionary, clairvoyant, clairvoyant gift. And foreseeing his imminent death, already approaching the age of 80, Rheinbeck bequeathed that after his death his body was put in a white camel and sent the camel to the west from the side of the Naring Kol. And where the camel would stop, it is usually called Shoket. As they say in Kazakh, this is where the camel lies. He told them to go there and bury him. According to legend, the camel on which carried the body of the Rheinbeck Batir stopped here on the territory of the present city of Almaty, on the avenue which now bears the name of the Rheinbeck, at this place. Later they built a complex, a memorial complex. And this place is considered sacred. Tens and hundreds of people come here expressing both gratitude and admiration and bowing before the exploits, before the live feet of Rheinbeck Batir. The mausoleum was opened in September 1992, but first here was just a mound where in 1981 a granite stallion was installed. But very few people know that this grave was wanted to be demolished. Local residents remember that the Oxacals warned builders that it was a big sin to desecrate the ashes of the great Rheinbeck. But in Soviet times, it was not customary to yield to some superstitions. 
a bulldozer moved to this valley at the grave of the Bartir. There was the surprise of the workers when the huge car stalled. At first, the bulldozer was not started for a long time and when the engine started again, it turned out that it can only move back up. It was enough for the driver to switch to the forward movement to the grave of Rainback, the car stalled again. As a result, the idea to demolish the stelly and destroy the burial place of the Batia was abandoned. I looked at all sources, studied both oral and written and records and memories of his descendants. Everyone says that his grave is here, but there is another opinion that his relatives, descendants, they made up such legends. But Kazakhs usually don't say such things in vain. If there is a place of worship, then it is really there. It was if he died in 1785, then his grave, it is still preserved since that ancient days. Pilgrims from all over the world would come to this place. People travel from India, Japan, Russia, neighboring Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan. Hundreds of people, more hundreds of people come here. A lot of pilgrimage. Buses arrive, that's every day something around five buses like tourists, a lot of pilgrims. Here they are called Agjol residents. They come here a lot with the hope of recovery to your family and relatives. Usually they ask for health. Well, and who does not have children, it happens. They ask too. They come here very much. They come with hope that it will finally come true. They come to Ryan back with different requests. While shooting this program, the Time Puzzle crew met a pilgrim from the southern Kazakhstan, from southern town of Aris. A young man, an actor by profession, learned that a movie about the history of the Kazakh Khanate was being filmed in Almaty. He decided to go to the city and try his luck without hesitation. But before going to the samples, he went to the grave of Ryan back Batir. Yeah, uh, uh before the casting, I wanted to do. I wanted to bow to Grandfather Rainberg Bater, take a blessing and read the Quran upon his soul. Faith in the help of ancestors, in their blessing, it has always been respected by the Kazakhs as something familiar and self-evident. This came to us in modern times, from the past, from those times when in the great steppe there were battles for free pastures, when the happy life of the people was above everything else. Ooh, Kazakhs Kazakh warriors have a battle cry, Aruak. They always, when they attacked, they begged the Aruaks, the souls of their ancestors, to help them. They always said, Aruak. They called their ancestors to help. I'm waiting for the casting. This project is called Kazakh Kandigi. There all our ancestors will be portrayed by actors. And I, I also wanted to participate and ask for help from the Aruaks. Everyone who comes to the complex, Rainbeck Batir gets help and attention here. It is enough to follow simple rules, the observance of which is strictly followed by the employees of the complex. First of all, we try to keep the order, the discipline. You know, in our hard time, there are a lot of vandals. Therefore, we control this all. Also, people just like you when they come here and ask for information. For example, foreigners come and ask us to tell about Ryan Beck. Here we have a clergyman, Molda. Some people ask them to read the Quran, for example. As for the exact date of the death of the legendary Batia, there is also no exact information. Some sources indicate that he died in 1780, in others that in 1785. Some simply do not specify the date of death and say that approximately in the period from 1780 to 1785. Nevertheless, these same historians who argue about the death of the Bartir unanimously assert that Ryan Beck took part in 77 battles and fights, had 33 injuries and left behind a huge number of descendants and unsolved riddles which the researchers are still fighting over.
The Kazakhstani land remembers and honors the names of the glorious Batirs. A special place in the history of the people and these lands is given to Raimbek Batir, a talented commander, a brave warrior and the son of his land. Even during his lifetime, he gained national glory and love. To this day, people honor the name of Raimbek Batir and receive help and patronage from him. My name is Andrei Slozhin and it was The Time Puzzle. See you.